Today what we're going to try and do is fix this uh, auxiliary electric fan out of the uh, 4 liter uh, Jeep Cherokee 1988. I was leaning on it and I broke this whole mounting ear off. You can see the crack. It was completely separated. This is from the same exact fan except in the junkyard and you use this um, since we're doing plastic welding this becomes welding rod. This is the extra material you add to the weld. So what I did experimentally to try this all out is this right here. Um, this is kind of a blown up version. It's way too big. <clears throat> God, it's, the lighting's going to be terrible. So anyway, this is way too big. It needs to be about... These vertical posts are about a half inch apart. Um, that's what the professional ones are. There are different shapes. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing initially here. This is uh, stainless steel wire. It's uh, 032. The professionals use 035. You know, it's all I got. So this is, my neighbor gave me this. It's from uh, Harbor Freight. So what you do is you take and you make your first post. And then you just make this so it weaves back and forth. It's a half inch wide and probably a quarter inch across. You want it fairly tight, tight, fairly tight bends, not kinked. Sorry if this is hard to see. This is uh, I'm going to shoot this all the way through because it's uh, it's a tough thing to do, and I don't want it to take me the rest of my life. Okay, so I'm going to bring this one up midway. <clears throat> all right, so now what we have is a basically a staple, and what you do is after you straighten it all out and make it level and flat and all that is you you lay it across the plastic and then you heat it up and sink it about halfway in that's what I did here <clears throat> um, I tried a couple of different I tried my Metcal iron this is pretty hot but it's not really hot enough to heat this whole piece of wire so then I went and grabbed the old uh, Weller 140 watt gun and tried that and it focuses more heat so I can what I can start doing um, what I did on this one is sink it in a little here then here then here and kind of work your way across and then what happens is is the plastic as you're sinking the staple done the plat down the plastic comes around it and kind of envelops it which is exactly what you want so once you get the whole thing sunk down, not too far, but about halfway, you know, half the thickness of your plastic, um, then you go back over it and you smooth it over. Now, you don't want to spend too much time smoothing it over because it kind of burns the plastic. So what you do then is, you know, ideally you cut this plastic into strips. I tried using um, some uh, aircraft cutters, but they're, they just, this stuff's a little brittle. I tried using a knife. I, I think you're going to have to use a bandsaw or a hacksaw to slice it into pieces. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay like a corner in there and melt it off and you know do it that way for right now at least to show you guys what I'm trying to do here. What motivates this repair is that to get another fan out of the junkyard it's 27 and a half bucks. Yeah well I know this fan worked. It's 30 years old but I know it worked. So we're going to make this uh, repair pay for itself, right, in theory? Okay, so make sure you tack it on the, ins on the outside and on the inside. Double tack it, because um, as you're pushing on this, you put a little stress on it. I had it, the, a bunch of the tacks break already once, so these tacks are like an eighth inch in diameter. It's not a big deal. You just want to blend the plastic in multiple places, and that's what gives it strength until you finish repairing it. 
Now the good thing is, is when this cracked again, this held up perfectly and it was really stiff and strong. It's pretty neat. Um, if you look on YouTube, you see a bunch of different brands of the staples and the, um, it's called a hot stapler. Did I get that right? A hot stapler? Yeah. And um, it gave me the idea, hey, I could do this at home. So anyway, the next step is I'm going to stick a, a big chunk of this right here. Yeah, it's pretty flat across, across this surface. It's pretty flat. So on the other side, this mounting hole isn't really important. It used to hold this connector. There was some kind of a, a doohitchy on there and it would pop in that hole and hold the connector out of the way. Well, it's long gone. It's long gone. So anyway, um, I'm going to try and shove that in for you in real time here. And it's going to take a while. This These steps are high detail and kind of boring, but if you ever try this, you'll be glad I did it. I hope I'm glad I did it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go across that part of the crack. And I'll do my best to stay out of the shot, but I have to be in the shot at least. Oh, man, that kills the light, doesn't it? All right, well. <clears throat> I wish this other Metcal worked because it would sink that whole thing in at the same time. The, uh, the ones that they use uh, professionally are, must be super high heat. They must be probably three, four, five hundred watts. And they can just sink that in. It just takes seconds to sink it in, you know. Uh, you're doing it at home. You got what you got. Some of you guys got those huge soldering pencils this long. That might work okay. You try not to shove it all the way through or you're screwed. Um, it's, oh, I think it's probably, I'm going to say, not knowing it yet, it's probably better to push it in not as far as you should, because when you take your spare plastic and put over it, you've created a nice uh, repair. Um, I'm using exactly the same plastic that this fan shroud's made out of. You know, you've you, you got to use the similar material if you want similar strength. So, all right, here we go. Let me move this guy back up. I want to see if I can pin this down and get it tacked in one place. This is not easy. You can hear it humming. And you want to do it outdoors, man, because whether it smokes or not, it stinks to high heaven. Okay. I'm going to try and sink it in, not quite as far as it needs to be, but I'm trying to just get it so it's tacked, so it'll stay in place. Ah, oh, come on, baby, get hot and sink in there for me. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on this. That's why you want all these tack welds um, to be fairly robust, because you're pushing on it with a little force. You don't want it breaking right in the middle of this. Come on, baby. There we go. Now it's all started moving. Or it's all started sinking in good. You can feel it and all of a sudden just drop. And then the plastic will come up and ooze up right around the wire and trap it, and that's precisely what you want. Ideally, you know, you got a great big tip and you're gonna drop it on here. Oh god, I'm right in the middle of the shot. Way to go, Mike. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so 
what you want to do is when you get to the end here, push down just a little bit on the end and hold it while it cures or re-solidifies I should say. Okay, now we got to go back over here. Man, I hope I didn't screw up that whole shot. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's how it goes. Okay, here we go. Yeah, maybe we could do it this way. You want to push down on this, um, Come on, Hummer. There you go. And you can see the smoke. There we go. That shoved it right in. That shoved it right in. That shoved it right in. Okay. Phew-wee. Now, I don't know if you can see it over here, but I have a wet paper towel folded up many times. So you can wipe your tip off. And, uh... It won't keep smoking for half an hour, you know? Okay, so that's not bad. That's not hideous. Um, what I'm going to do is smooth it over with this one. Uh, where's my glasses? Smooth this over. Oh, come on, I'm right here. That thing should be blazing hot. There we go. You just want to smooth it a little bit. You don't want it perfect. Oh, there we go. Now it's in further. Oh, okay, this is sinking it now. Oh, look at that. Okay. Well, maybe the big iron, the gun, preheated it. Because now this bad boy is sinking it in really nice. Okay, sorry, I'm going to block the shot. i got to hold this part down right here. Oof, there we go. And there's a great big old chunk of plastic right here you can shove in. Okay, now while all this is hot, I'm going to try and not uh, get in the shot. <laughs> mm, that kills all my light. <sighs> there we go. And you can pre-cut this, your, your weld rod, if you will, into little pieces. There's, you know, you gotta figure out what works for you. You don't want to burn the plastic, you just want to melt it. All oh, that, adding that chunk just really made it nice. Okay, so I'm going to add another piece in here. Slice it off like you're slicing butter. Put it in that mess. Everything's still hot. The wire's still hot. The plastic's still hot. And yeah, I took some uh, electric cleaner and cleaned all this plastic real good. Mine happened to have oil on it before I started, so I needed it really clean. Here we go. Boy, that bad boy looks so good now. Okay. So I added, it's, it's basically flush, which means I'm probably pushing it through the other side a little bit. But we're not going to look right this second. Um, I am going to chop off some more because all you hot rodders out there and four wheel guys know that more is better. Oh, I take a big chunk off of this one. There we go. Woo, that's a huge chunk. I may not get that. Melted in, t in time here. Come on. Come on. Oh, crap. Okay, well, that was too big of a piece. So maybe 
cutting it into little chunks is better because it um, it melts fast. Okay, is this too hot to handle? Nope. So what I'm going to do, this is like when you cut it with dikes, it's the shit's going to explode and go everywhere. And it didn't. Okay, let's try it. Alright. Oh, well, duh. My iron has an automatic shut off. And it was shut off. That's why I didn't melt it. All right. Okay. Well, anyway, that is basically flush with the rest of this, which is not bad. I think building it up would probably be better. Um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. On this piece right here. Come on, baby. I'm gonna apologize for blocking the shot. Oh, don't fall in the hole. <laughs> of course, it fell in the only hole on the whole piece. Okay, here we go. And I dropped that one on the ground. So there you go. Trying to do this on camera is not easy. All right, here we go. Here we go, my iron shut off, no wonder it wouldn't melt. Okay, so now that's built up another 32nd of an inch on top of the wire, melted into everything underneath. So that's really strong. And what you do is you'll take your finest diagonal cutters and cut these wires flush. You could you got to cut them real flush, you end up slicing your hand open. Um, wow, that came out fantastic. Alright, so I don't suppose I could find that. <clears throat> Sorry! <laughs> okay, now let's do this other piece. This other section's stone cold now. Let's see if it holds, uh, if it melts it okay. I think it should be all right. Let's take your iron, your pencil, whatever you got, flatter is better, and just shove it right down into the base material and across your, um, and across your wire, your staple. Oh, that came out sweet. It filled that bad boy right in. Okay, that that was good. I like that. All right, so the impression I'm getting <clears throat> is it's going to be really strong, really sturdy here. Um, so what you got to get is another piece of plastic. <clears throat> um, so you can just drop it on there. That seems to work good. And plus it's faster, just chopping off little chunks instead of trying to bandsaw it. Um, a long strip would be great because you could melt it off. It's just like a welding rod, you know. That would probably be best. But I don't want this to take me the rest of my life to show you guys how to do. Not that I have a life, but I'd like to pretend like I do. Okay. Sorry for blocking it right there. Damn it. Okay, there we go. Now you just heat it up, push it down into the base material so it actually bonds to it. Wow, that came out stellar. Okay, now there's a big crater back here. It's probably hard for you guys to see, but it needs to be filled. And I'll, I'll flip this over and show you the back side, and then I'm going to finish this off camera because this is just going to take longer than even I could probably watch. And I watch a lot of you guys' videos to learn how to do stuff, so 
Um, plus, I know that spotlight I've got, the batteries are getting weak. The lithium batteries are getting weak. So here we go. Okay, the lights are on. Let's shove that in there. Shove it right into that crater. Oh yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now that bad boy is filled in nice. Now the crack goes clear down to the end here, so I'm going to have to put one or two staples in this section, but later on. So, all right, let me show you what we have up till now on the other side, what it looks like. It doesn't look like anything. So, we got one staple down here, and all you can see is a slight indentation from one part of the staple, but the rest of it you can't hardly see. This is a tack weld, tack weld, tack weld, tack weld, tack weld. So we got one staple here, you can't see it push through. Yeah, actually you can see it zigzag a little bit. So I didn't push it all the way through, which is absolutely important. So anyway, um, that, my friends, I am fairly confident it's going to hold up really good on the Jeep, vibrating and running down the highway. Um, yeah, it takes a lot of time, depends. You know, if you got uh, more, more money than time, then you just go get another fan, but I can't do that. So, here we go. Um, slice yours up, your plastic if you can. Um, small pieces are okay, apparently, from what I'm doing here. A piece of long strip would be handy. It would it'd probably be even quicker because I had to cut these on the fly. This is, like I said, that was the first one I did off camera. This is the second one I did, or whichever way it was. But that is some stiff, wonderful stuff. And just to finish the thought, you want to cut that. Well, that'll slice you wide open. Oh, man. Uh, shoo, I don't know. You reach your hand across that, it will cut you wide open. And that's only sticking up about 64th of an inch. So I may have to take an angle grinder or a Dremel tool or something and knock that flat right there because maybe I should just melt some plastic over it, but that would be kind of a high spot. Um, maybe plastic would be better, but that's sharp. And if you have a bunch of these, it's dangerous. So think about that as you guys do this. Obviously, I will as I go through this. All right, well, that's 23 minutes of your life, and especially mine, but I think this is going to be a perfectly good DIY repair that, um, you know, you learn from the professionals and take it home and do it yourself. All right, anyway, I hope it helps. Uh, it definitely helped me. I'll get this done here shortly, and um, I don't know. And go bolt it back on the Jeep. Go drive it. See what happens. All right. Thanks. See ya. Bye.